All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Eric Loma, and it's my pleasure to introduce my group of Claudia Medina and Naya Hawthorne. Um, and we are going to be going over our lesson on identifying personification and theme of the poem, Liberty Needs Glasses. Um, the main um, target audience for our lesson is um, grade nine, so ninth graders. Um, understanding that in regards to understanding the context of this lesson is a um, greater part of a poetry unit and where we're just focusing on, as you see with our objectives, we'll be focusing on uh, personification. Um, so students will be able to identify an example of personification and then be able to interpret um, that, as well as students will be able to articulate theme um, and interpret their own theme of the poem, Liberty Needs Glasses. Um, you'll see our uh, state standards there um, as well too. So understanding that, uh, we understand that figurative language is a very complex, is very complex. Um, so prior to this lesson, um, we would have had a lesson that goes over figurative language um, and giving plenty of examples for our students to understand hyperbole, similes. Um, so for example, like we would show that, uh, give the example of heavy as a rock for a simile or the story of the three little pigs and how hard work pays off in regards to theme um, or the potato dance in regards to personification. Um, utilizing that next lesson, in regards to this lesson, connecting to that next lesson, we wanted to start with a gallery walk. So reminding the students of all of those different um, pieces of figurative language that we learned, and then um, just reinforcing with other examples. So uh, the gallery walk is where students will have a worksheet that will have example uh, definitions and the, um, uh, and the samples of figurative language or the words of figurative language. And then they would go around the room and we would have different posters up um, that have examples. So they would basically link the word, let's say, I died waiting in line, they would link that example to a hyperbole. Or in the movie Jingle Jingle, which is just on Netflix right now, I would definitely recommend it, um, where they would, we, where in the movie, they learn that we must believe in your, our dreams, which is an example of a theme. Um, so that is kind of just kind of connecting this, this lesson to our previous lesson. And I'll leave it up to Claudia to go over um, and start with our do now. Alrighty, so right after we kind of go after uh, we review the answers in the gallery walk, we would move into our do now. So the purpose of the do now is to really build um, the activate students prior knowledge and to get students start thinking about the major topics of the poem. So on uh, the next slide, you'll see our um, questions posted. Um, Oh, here we are. So the first question, what do you think of when you hear the words liberty and justice? And do you think we live in a society that is just and free? Why or why not? And uh, while also reinforcing that the words liberty and justice are um, cognates, um, and we can say in Spanish they're cognados, and they translate to justicia y libertad with the same um, sounds and the same meanings. Um, after um, students will write down their responses in their writer's notebook and then pair share the responses with each other and then finally share out responses to uh, as a whole class while students are sharing out responses um, the teacher the teacher will or i will um, you know uh, write down the students responses on the whiteboard and kind of categorize what they're saying into groups and um, what makes sense for for what the students are responding and it is very important and key to keep these the students responses on the whiteboard during the whole lesson so that it's visible to them so that they can refer back to their own class definition um, as we continue on in the activity so just as important as it is to activate their prior knowledge, it is also important to give them some historical background on what is happening in the poem. So in the poem, one of the biggest topics that the author hits is the Iran-Contra scandal. And so to give students some background information on that, we will show them a YouTube video summarizing um, what happened there historically, while making sure that we're using Spanish sub subtitles so that it is accessible um, to uh, our full range of learners. And right after the video, we're just gonna kind of quickly discuss um, 
was the uh, was the Iran Contra scandal, you know, uh, were President Reagan's um, actions justified, you know, or were they just? Um, and then referring back to the whiteboard again, um, just to see how the students make those connections. And so after this, we move on to our core activity where we really attack the reading and we identify the figure, the personification and the theme. So first of all, we would introduce the author and then noting how um, Tupac, you know, is known as a great rapper and artist of the 90s, but also what, um, what you might not, what students might not know about him was that he was an avid uh, poem writer and his parents and his family members, you know, were some mem prominent members of the Black Panther Party. And so connecting that to Tupac. Um, and then we also thought that we would use this artist because he's well known and you know would be engaging to students. So um, the way that we would read the poem is that the, we, I would read a line and students would repeat the same line, you know, in hopefully getting students to all participate since they're all reading as a class, they might feel more comfortable to um, read aloud. Finally, um, after the reading, the, the, you know, we, the teacher or I would model how to find uh, personification and annotate on the board and ask students to annotate what the teacher is annotating, what I'm annotating on their own document. So uh, one of the key things that we would annotate is kind of all of the examples of personification in the poem, right? Just by underlining and asking students where do you see another one and then underlining their responses. And so next we would move on to the graphic organizer. So in the graphic organizer, um, first the teacher will, will model how to, how, to, um, how to attack this. So first we, I would pick a direct quote from the poem that has personification. For example, both the broads are blind as bats. And then you kind of ask what's being personified. Um, Lady Liberty and Justice are being personified um, as being blind. And what is the personific personification showing, right? Well, it's showing that they're not really seeing what's happening. And then you would draw, the teacher would model drawing an image of um, the quote. And so then you would ask students, um, to find an example with a partner, right, on their own. And again, they can refer back to the annotations that are already in their poem. Um, and they can also re refer back to the teacher's model example. And finally, they, we would also ask the students to um, create an image, right, to visualize um, what the quote says. So after this, um, I'm gonna pass it on to Naya, who's gonna go over our closing activity. Hi everyone. So we will close out our activity with a class discussion. And so um, the teacher will be posing the, the following questions to the students. We would ask, what is Tupac's message in the poem? How does he use personification to show his message? And also, if you agree, if the student if each student agrees with Tupac, um, why or why not? Um, and so with that, we have sentence stems at the bottom, and so the student would just fill those in about when they what they believe Tupac's message is, um, when they notice personification is used in two separate occasions, and then um, I'm sorry. They say when personification is used, and then they give two times when. Um, they will say what it shows, I'm sorry. So they will say what personification is showing in those examples um, on two separate occasions. And then they will decide whether they agree or disagree with the author who is Tupac and they will say why. And then they will tie in Tupac's poem with what's going on today. And they will, they will finish the sentence down an issue that, is, that um, they see lacking in justice today is blank. Um, and so that's just a good way to just segue back into the real world um, because that's what Tupac's poem was all about, something that was happening currently at that time. We'll end our assignment with an exit ticket. The students will be able to choose to write one stanza of a poem that discusses either a current world issue or a personal issue they're experiencing using personification. 
some examples right now that are the current pandemic we are in, COVID-19. Also, the elections, they can either choose between the United States elections or any other country's elections. Um, immigration in our country right now, like everything that's going on for the dreamers or even parents being taken away from their children and um, children being sick or dying, um, missing, any of those issues. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, which ties into the police killings of citizens that are going on in our country right now, many of them unarmed or have mental, mental health issues. Um, climate change are, is one of the global issues that's going on that students can choose from. Also pollution, which can be clean water, it can be pesticides, being lots of different air pollution, um, different things that can talk about. And the last is terrorism or, and war. And so just giving the students an opportunity to think what's going on now and how they can use that um, to make their own poem. And that's how we would end our lesson.